Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Steven here with Team Euphoric and February's Moron of the Month is Neil. Drumroll, please. It's Amber O'Hearn. Let's see why she's a moron. Amber O'Hearn is a self-proclaimed expert because she's been speaking for over a decade and she popularized the term lipivore and she gets really, really upset when you offer basic fat loss advice. Last week I ended up posting about gluconeogenesis, if you missed that video, I'm going to include a link right up over here, but the reason she got mad is because I said protein is not the reason that you are fat, and I offered four simple weight loss hacks. Those four hacks were number one, get a good night's sleep, number two, drink more water, number three, limit your meals to 15 minutes, and number four, get off your butt and move around more, to which Amber replied, the carnivore diet does not require adjustments to sleep, drinking more water, eating within a time window, eating more protein protein or doing exercise. Some of these things are even anti-recommended on carnivore or generally. This has nothing to do with whether or not high fat is bad, it's just stupid, unnecessary advice that has nothing to do with the topic of this group. No one wants your irrelevant self-promotion here. In case you're not familiar, the carnivore diet entails eating animal foods typically focused on but not limited to red meat, to satiation for as long or little as hunger dictates, sleeping when tired, drinking only when thirsty, and exercising only when your body is called to do so. So I want to touch on those four different pieces of advice and explain why exactly they are nonsense. And the first one that I want to touch on is eating high fat to satiation. This is going to be terrific advice for people that have never struggled with weight in their lives. However, it is going to be absolutely terrible advice for people that have always struggled with weight and who are morbidly obese for a few reasons. Number one, Generally, those types of people are going to have very poor body awareness as over 36% of Americans are obese. If they knew how to control their hunger properly, then they wouldn't be obese to begin with. The second problem is that a lot of these people are going to have hormonal imbalances and two hormones that are going to be negatively affected are going to be ghrelin and insulin. Ghrelin is your hunger hormone and aside from it being your hunger hormone, it's also linked to poor decision making. So if you tell somebody who has been struggling with weight their entire life and who has issues with ghrelin to just eat until they're satiated, they're not going to be able to properly regulate their hunger and they're going to make poor food choices and eat more than they actually need. And then with regard to insulin, if you are somebody who is severely obese, when you have insulin resistance, or if you have low insulin sensitivity, it is going to cause you to crave foods and it's going to, again, be a lot more difficult for you to manage your hunger. So this is one of the reasons why it's terrible to tell morbidly obese people who have always struggled with weight, just eat until you're satiated. The second problem, or the third problem, is that protein is going to be more satiating than fat. So telling them, eat fat until you are satiated, is going to generally be terrible advice. Now. With regard to protein being more satiated, this is something that often gets confused, but on a mass basis, fat is more satiating than protein, but on an energy basis, protein is more satiating than fat. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, pound for pound, if you consume X amount of grams of fat versus X amount of grams of protein, the, the fat is going to be more satiating. However, on a calorie per calorie basis, protein is way more satiating. If we were to take something that is basically pure protein, like egg whites, versus something that is basically pure fat, like butter, you could consume one kilogram of egg whites, or you could consume 50 grams worth of butter, and it's going to have the same amount of usable energy. Now try this experiment at home. Go home, cook yourself a kilo of egg whites, and see how much that fills you up. Then the next day, try eating a 50 gram stick of butter, and see if that fills you up. What do you think is going to be more satiating? One kilo of egg whites or 50 grams of butter? Then, with regard to protein, another reason why it's very, very bad to tell people to fill up on fat and to minimize protein is because if you do not consume enough protein, aside from it being important for things like building muscle, you also need it for things like tissue repair, and also you're going to need it for your body's natural detoxification system. With regard to your body's detoxification system, we have three phases. We have the bioactivation phase, the conjugation phase, and the transportation phase. With regard to each three of these phases, amino acids are going to be very, very important, and particularly during phase two, the conjugation phase of the detoxification system, amino acids are going to play an essential role in that detox system. So if you prioritize fat over protein and you don't get enough protein, your body is not naturally going to be able to detoxify itself, which is why you want to at least get in your bare minimum protein requirements. It doesn't need to make up the bulk of your diet, but you don't want to sacrifice protein for fat. 
And then with regard to my general recommendations for protein, if you are overweight or obese, then generally anywhere from 35 to 60% of your calories should be coming from protein with either 40 to 65% coming from fat. And then the more overweight you are, generally it's gonna be better to stick closer toward the higher end of the protein range. And then as you get lighter and leaner, you could get closer to the higher fat. But for the average overweight person, getting anywhere from 40 to 65% fat is going to be plenty. You don't need to be consuming 80% fat. Next, let's take a look at the second part of the claim, sleep when you are tired. This is absolutely terrible advice because prior to electricity, we would just go to bed as the sun would set and we would wake up as the sun rises. However, now that we have electricity, we are bombarded with artificial light. And aside from the artificial light, we are always on our screens right over here. And these screens, they emit blue light. When you are staring at blue light, that is going to throw off your body's production of melatonin. And the other thing is it's gonna throw off your natural sleep-wake cycles. So if you're staring at a screen before bed, it's gonna make it a lot more difficult for you to fall asleep. And also, there is a strong correlation between sleep and obesity. If you're not sleeping as much, you, it's gonna be a lot more likely that you are going to be overweight. And one of the reasons goes back to ghrelin. Remember, the hunger hormone. If you do not get an adequate amount of sleep, your ghrelin levels are going to be elevated. So you're gonna be hungrier first thing in the morning and you're gonna be much more likely to make poor decisions like grabbing a high sugar energy drink or a coffee instead of getting something like good quality fats and proteins for breakfast. And then another thing with regard to the actual problem of going to sleep when you are tired is we have so many distractions. We have movies, we have video games, there are so many different things. Back in the day, you didn't have any of that stuff. When you were done at the end of the day, you would work, you would come home, the sun would set, you had nothing to do. So now we have so many different distractions that telling someone just go to bed when you wanna to go to bed is terrible advice. If I didn't have a pre-bed ritual, I wouldn't go to bed until two in the morning. With my pre-bed ritual, I go to bed at eight o'clock and then when I wake up, I am completely refreshed. Then the third thing, drink only when you are thirsty. Again, telling people only do this when you feel like doing this is terrible advice and that is why there is an obesity problem. If people only drink when they're thirsty, a few problems. Number one is people are going to confuse their thirst cues with their hunger cues. People are often going to drink water or are often going to eat food when they should be drinking water instead. And our stomach is stupid. We have gastric stretch receptors that expand when our stomach gets full. And our stomach, it is stupid. It doesn't understand if it is full with water or food. As it stretches, those gastric stretch receptors, they send a signal to the brain letting us know that we're full. And then that is going to cause us to stop eating. So the next time you think you are hungry, drink some water instead. That will expand your stomach, you'll think you're full, and then you won't be as hungry. Another one of the problems is a lot of people that say, do this only when you are this, like only drink when you're thirsty or only sleep when you're tired or anything like that. They are also proponents of the ancestrally appropriate diet. So what exactly did our ancestors drink? Well. Prior to commercial farming and actually raising meat, we would hunt. And when we did hunt, our ancestors would drink the blood of the animals. However, meat today, it does not contain as much water as the animals back from the past. One of the reasons is because now we have commercial meat. So when the animal is slaughtered, it gets drained of all the blood. That loses water from the actual meat. Then it gets put on a truck. It's gonna lose a little bit of water on the truck. Then it gets sent to the butcher. When the butcher chops it up, it loses more blood over there. It gets sent onto another truck, more water loss. Then it finally gets sent to the grocery store where it sits on a shelf. So the actual water content of the meat that you are consuming today is very, very dehydrated compared to the water where if you were to actually hunt an animal and kill it on the spot and then eat the organs, drink the blood, and you can compare this yourself if you are a hunter. Put a fresh piece of meat right on the counter, go take a piece of meat from the grocery store, place it next to it on the counter, and just look at the difference in water content from the fresh kill versus the one that's been sitting on shelves for who knows how long. Then, with regard to the final part, exercise only when your body is called to do so. This is terrible advice. Our bodies are designed to move. And with regard to our actual ancestors, again, let's take a look. Prior to the agricultural revolution or the Neolithic revolution, we had to build shelter. We were picking up heavy rocks, moving boulders out of the way, picking up stones, and we had to build shelter that way. And then we had to hunt for food. We were chasing animals with rocks and sticks. If we were lucky enough to kill one of those animals, we had to drag it back to the cave so that we could share it with other people. Then we moved on to the post-agricultural and the Neolithic revolutions, and we moved on to parts where we could actually farm and raise animals, cattle, and also things like plants. And during that period of time, we did hard manual labor and we were outdoors in the sun all the time. 
All of those things require a lot more energy expenditure and we were constantly moving throughout the day. We would spend eight plus hours outside growing all that food, raising those animals and doing heavy manual labor like moving bundles of hay and working with this heavy duty machinery. Then let's go even just as far back as the 1950s. In the 1950s, people walked everywhere or they rode their bikes. If you had to go to the grocery store, you walked or rode your bike to the grocery store, then you carried your groceries home by hand. Then if you wanted to do something like mow the lawn, you needed to use a manual lawn mower and actually walk forward and backward to mow the lawn yourself. Then another thing is everything was done manually. If you wanted to wash your clothes, you had to use a washing board. If you wanted to wash the dishes, you did that by hand. If you were cooking anything, if you were whisking something, you had to whisk it by hand. We had heavy cast iron steel pots and pans that weighed a lot more, requires a lot more energy to move that around. Let's fast forward to today. Today, we have cars that we drive everywhere. If we get groceries, we put them in the trunk. We don't even have to carry them. Or if we don't do that, we'll get it delivered to the house. We'll get Uber Eats, something like that. Then, if we're gonna mow the lawn, all we have to do is push the handle. The lawn mower is gonna move forward by itself. If we are going to wash clothes or wash dishes, we put it in a washing machine. If we end up, we don't go outside to play with friends anymore. We watch TV, we're in front of the computers, we play video games, we don't work outdoors anymore, we work indoors. All of that stuff requires less energy. So telling people only move when you feel like moving is terrible advice and that is why people are obese today. Back in the day, people had to move and our bodies are designed to move. So if you only sleep when you're tired, move when you feel like moving, drink when you're thirsty, you are going to be overweight. You need to make a conscious effort to do all of these things. So if you want to lose weight and you don't want to count calories, the four simple things that you could do. Number one, get a good night's sleep so you can manage your ghrelin better. Number two, drink more water that way when your stomach expands, you think it's full and you end up getting no calories from the water and you burn additional calories because your body is going to have to heat that water up to the same temperature as your internal body temperature. Number three, limit your meal to 15 minutes. That way, you can limit the amount of energy that you are ingesting without having to count. And number four, get off your butt and move around. No, you don't need to go to the gym, you don't need to spend hours at the gym, but you do need to move because that is what we were designed to do. So get off your butt, move around, and that is how you can lose weight effortlessly. Thanks for hanging around until the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like the video and comment down in the comment section as it would really help out with the algorithm. And also share this video so we can help get this information out to as many people as possible. And also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the icon in the bottom right hand corner and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the videos. For those of you interested in health optimization, you can check out the video in the top right corner where I discuss the six foundation principles. And for those of you interested in optimizing your performance, then consider becoming a member. It's only $5 per month and you get a ton of perks including exclusive access to this program design lecture series playlist above my head. 